My name is Gunnar Schelin. I'm an Associate Professor of Environmental Development Economics at uh, the Department of Economics, University of Gothenburg. But I'm also and mostly the Director for the Environment for Development Initiative, which has uh, centers all over the world. We have now 12 environmental economic centers globally working for uh, reduced poverty and more sustainable natural resource management. Well, I've been active in this area now for, for uh, 30 years. I started in Ethiopia in 1987 from a bachelor's thesis, and that was in the wake of the big uh, uh, famine in central Ethiopia. So what was so striking when, when I came down there was that that was all induced by bad policy. Of course, there were lacking rains and so on, but the reason why people were starving to death was because of the policies during that uh, uh, Mengistu regime. So since then, so now for 30 years, I, I've been so convinced that we can eradicate poverty. But for that, we need to, to make the best use of our knowledge, of course. And it's uh, just so frustrating to see when our knowledge is not put to work for uh, reducing uh, poverty and for increasing productivity in lands and for just uh, ruining our, our environmental basis. Uh, and uh, really the most frustrating thing is, of course, that these countries that are so dependent on their natural resources, on their environment, they are the ones that make the, the, the least use of it and they have the least capacity to, to increase their productivity and to, to, to really um, make use of, of the knowledge that we have acquired over the, over the years. So ever since then, I've been uh, committed to creating new knowledge, first of all, creating capacity uh, to apply this knowledge. So we have had a PhD program here in, in Gothenburg. Um, we have produced some 40 PhDs from developing countries in environment and, and climate e economics. And then through this uh, Environment for Development initiative, we have enabled them to go back to their countries and put their skills to work to reduce poverty and to to uh, improve the management of uh, of the environment. I would love to show you on our website. We have all these policy stories when we are following our research and, and the implications of our research, and uh, it's like sunshine stories from from uh, you know inception to to impact. And we have more than 70 stories like that now on, on our website. It's just a crying shame today in, in, in this time uh, that people would actually starve to death or, or live in uh, utmost uh, poverty. There is no reason to do that. And I think that is also why this is the most fundamental goal of all the SDGs. This is where we should start and we should start yesterday. I think I would would uh, invite um, uh, Isabella Levin, our uh, uh, Minister of Development Assistance, because what we have done in our program is something very unique. We have applied uh, research as a development assistance tool. So when we are working, and we have received support from from CEDA to to build capacity and to apply this capacity in developing countries, and we've done that as part of of Swedish development assistance, not as a kind of independent research project, but as integrated in Swedish development assistance. Well, on on the one hand, uh, we can feel that the urgency that we have to act today, but we have to realize that. The challenge we see today, for example, with climate change in, in developing countries and adaptation to climate change, these things are not going away. So when we started our collaboration with CEDA uh, some 25 years ago, we were so privileged because um, the people we were working with at CEDA, they were insisting that we should have a long-term perspective. You know, what would you like to see five years down the line, 10 years down the line? And now the capacity that we started to build in the 90s and, and that we have continued to support in the countries, they are now uh, maturing and, and creating you know, knock-on effects in, in the countries. It, this is, uh, an eye, it should be an eye-opener even to our minister and to many others that, that 
this is how academics can be used that we can build for the long term build capacity in the countries so that they themselves can solve their own problems and we can increase the efficiency of not only Swedish development assistance, but also other countries' development assistance by applying this local uh, research and do impact evaluation studies and so on. So I would like to sit down, have a cup of coffee with her, maybe a cinnamon bun, but really show that, that Sweden cannot be the biggest anymore. But we can be the best and we should be the best. And by applying, you know, smart development assistance, by injecting applied research in development assistance programs, that is the way to do it. And we have shown th that it works. So, so environmental economics, it's, it's kind of the, the part of economics that is very, very much interactions with other disciplines. So um, when we're, so this environmental externality is something that is very, very uh, central to our field where, where you know, the, the environmental effect of our behavior affects someone else without that being compensated on, on the market. So I would say that most, uh, the best collaborations we've had has been with science. So for example, the physical resource uh, theory, uh, at Chalmers, we have a lot of things in common, and they're coming with, with you know, really solid science, and we're coming with the economics part, and we are um, approaching this with very much the same goal of, of making a difference with our re research. So I, I would say that that is the kind of sister field that we ha uh, have had most uh, synergies with.